It's time for the Retro Time Machine, where we discuss all things retro. Now let's welcome our host, Jay Jennings. Hi everybody and welcome to the Retro Time Machine. I'm your host Jay Jennings where we discuss all things retro and today we have a special guest and you recognize him from those jack-in-the-box commercials from the early 70s, the one and only Rodney Allen Rippey. Hi Rodney. Hey, how are you Jay? How's everything? Good, good. We're honored to have you. How you been doing? Man, it's great, man. It, it just hanging out here man and and just taking it easy and just enjoying life man it's it's rolling man we're rolling we're we're here ah the we we're gotten through the pandemic thank god we 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 made it and, and we're we're still pressing forward man we're pressing forward right are you ready to in, uh, enter the retro time machine <laughs> hey heck yeah hey take us back man take we're going way back. back way back to 1971. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Is that far enough back for you? How you like that? Oh man, that's so cool. There right? you go. I'll right? take you back. Well, listen, you, you know. were you were born in Long Beach in '68, right? Yes, sir. And I know your family moved out uh, out here, mm -hmm. and uh, and in '71, you had a life changing moment when you happened to be watching The Little Rascals and. Something happened. Mom came in, asked you a couple questions, and that kind of set you off to destiny. That was it. That's how it all got started. What you happened know? that that fateful day? You know, I was just a little little kid living in beautiful Long Beach, California. I grew up on the west side of Long Beach, and I always will have my heart there in Long Beach. You know, that's where it all got started. And um, you know, we're just a normal middle class family. My dad, Fred actually worked for the city of Long Beach in sanitation. My All dad right. was a trash man. And um, mom was a, I would call her a home technician because everything in the house, mom ran like it was her castle. And so um, one day I was just there as a little kid watching the little rascals, as you mentioned. And my mom was in there washing dishes. And so I kept laughing and laughing and my mom she comes in and she's like, what's so funny? And I point at the television. And so my mom goes, oh, you're laughing at Buckwheat. And I'm like, yep. Who else would you be laughing at, right? Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm watching the whole gang. I loved all the guy, all the gang, you know. And uh, my mom was like, what, you think you could do that? And I'm like. And she Damn goes, straight. <laughs> and I'm like, she was like, you wouldn't be afraid of all those cameras and lights? I'm like. And my mom was like, hmm, really? So she called my bluff and uh, went over to the Yellow Pages. And in the Yellow Pages at that time, there were talent agents and managers. And so lo and behold, my mom starts thumbing through and making calls. And before you know it, she had my brother, Kenneth Wayne, my sister, Beverly Lee, and myself. We were all signed up with an agent. And so my sister, she had went out and had an audition. My brother had a couple calls. And and I got the call one day. I was the baby of the bunch. And um call came in for, uh, for Jack in the Box. And it was a huge audition. Uh, the corporate, I mean, they it was a big push. I mean, they wanted to change their image. They were in financial trouble. Get away from the, the clown head kind of thing, right? Well, no. I mean, it wasn't so much the clown head. That wasn't a problem. They were in financial straits. And they needed something, someone, anything to pull them out. So lo and behold, there was this huge casting and I got called in on, there were like a hundred kids called in, all nationalities, boy, girl, it didn't matter. They just needed- It's a long row right down the hallway on each side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they just needed a, they needed a cute kid to pull them out. And, and I just happened to, happened to land the job. So did you get you got how soon before you got the call back or did you have to do several? Believe it or not, I went in the very first audition. I did not have any formal acting classes or training. I was just three and a half years old and I went in for the audition and the guy loved the uh, the, the audition so much. He just laughed. He, he just died laughing and sent me out of the room. And as I walked out, my mom could see this guy literally roll off the couch laughing. 
And my mom was like, oh my God, they laughed him out of here. And so my mom was concerned. So we get home and my agent called in and her name was Dorothy Day Otis. And Dorothy Day, she was the top uh, child actor agent in I Hollywood. heard of them, them and Charles Stern. Oh yeah, there were some, there were some big players. Yeah. And um, Dorothy called later that afternoon and said, hey, Rodney has a call back, take him back. They're going to see him tomorrow, same time. And whatever he did, they love him. So take him back. My mom goes, they laughed him out of the place. They go, they go <laughs> no, apparently they were loving him. So take him back. So I go back the very next day. There were even more people there in the casting, in, in the room, actually. And uh, it turns out I landed the Jack in the Box cam uh, campaign that ran for 14 years. Now, did you know at the time you thought it would be maybe a one and done or did, you, did they tell you this is going to be for a few commercials? They didn't even know. The impact was so powerful. Um, it, it was just that we did that first commercial and it was so impactful that it went on. And then they, I guess the ad agency, it was a big uh, New York ad agency that got involved. I believe it was Dole Dane and Birnbach, they were, I mean, they were one of the biggest, you know, ad agencies out there. And, you know, it turned out they started cranking these commercials. And then one of them, actually, I was actually singing a song. Right. It was called Take Life a Little Easier. Yeah, we'll get so, to that in a, in a few minutes. Yeah, that, man. But before so, that, you, you had glasses made of onion rings. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that was one of my that was one of my commercials. See, let me tell you what happened. They that commercial, they had a table full of every food that Jack in the Box they made. did. It's a huge table. And the funny thing was they just let me graze and they were just like they were rolling a camera and just letting me graze and eating and sampling all these things and that was one of the shots that I did that apparently they liked. And it, it, it pretty much just turned into a huge, huge campaign. Well, stopped. let's not kid a kidder. It, it made them some, it made them some bank. You, you, you put, you put them Jack in the box back on the map, I think. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> it actually pulled them out of foreclosure and they, they've been rolling ever since. Right. So let's, uh, I think we have that first commercial. Oh, wow. Yep, so I think we could uh, check that out. So let's see. And the director's actually talking to you. Was that part of the script or was that improv? Believe it or not, this is my audition. And what you hear is the casting director. The audition, this is my very first audition. It went so perfect, they decided just to turn my audition into the commercial. So they just rolled tape and whatever happened, happened then. Yep. That's All right, exactly well, let's take a happened. look at the first... Jack in the Box commercial. Hi. Haven't I seen you on TV before? Yeah. What's your name? Rodney. Rodney what? Rodney Allen Rippy. What's that in front of you? A jumbo jack. A jumbo jack? From Jack in the Box. Did you ever get a bite out of it? It's too big to eat. You think you'll be able to get a bite now? Give it a try, Rodney. Tell us how you like it. I can't. I got uh -uh. I got uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That wow. And then and the rest is history, basically. That's it, man. That's how it all got started. And so after that, how soon did they call you back to do more commercials for Jack in the Box? It started, I guess, it pretty much started within a matter of a month. Once that commercial started running, they figured that they had lightning in a bottle. And so the next thing, we just continued to crank commercials and I have to say, I went on and did, wow, a whole series of commercials for Jack in a Box. And there was, it even, we even had a, a contest to be in a commercial of sweepstakes at Jack in a Box. And the really neat thing is it was just so many fun things. It was traveling, it was red carpets, it was cutting of uh, ribbons. Actually, Jack in a Box actually sponsored uh the cutting of the ribbon at SeaWorld down in San Diego. So I'm down there and they had this Volkswagen with all of these Jack in the Box logos all over the, the this yellow Volkswagen and it was neat. And so the um, 
the Academy of Television Arts and Science gave me an award, which I have over here on my shelf for having one of the greatest commercials in the past 50 years. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, it's, it's, it's iconic. You actually, you can even say you were the face of Jack in the Box. I mean, they went as you went. I mean, as those commercials came on, families would gather up in the, in the, in the, in the station wagon and wherever, mm -hmm. and let's head on to Jack in the Box because, you know, you, have, you were a cute, super cute kid. It touched yeah. something with, did it play in more than the United States? Did it play overseas or only over here? It played, believe it or not, <clears throat> to coast. It was really funny. Jack in the Box didn't have locations in some cities. And I've ran into people all my life and they go, your commercial ran in my city, but there were no Jack in the Box. Mm. I was like, wow. I was like, really? They go, we used to always try to figure out where is this Jack in the Box? Place? So, <laughs> needless to say, Jack in the Box and, of course, the ad agency people, they were very, very sharp. And uh, they decided what the heck, you know, they had something and they rode the wheels off of it. So it was great. And there you are taking another another big bite. Of course. And being a little kid, you know, when they gave me the green light to take a bite. And really, actually, if you go back to that clip. Right. When he asked me to tell him, how do you like it? I, I remember my mom in the in the lobby saying rodney whatever you do don't talk with your mouth full <laughs> so even when the guy asked me well hey how you like it i said mm -mm, can't talk my mouth's full and that's just what cracked him up and it stayed in the the commercial right i can i got uh-uh exactly <clears throat> that's it love that now from that whose idea was it to just not have a cute little kid say i love jack-in-the-box burgers and onion rings Whose idea was it to have you record a single for, for the commercial? Actually, that became, actually, they came up with this jingle for the, the commercial, and they had a song called Take Life a Little Easier, which it was actually a Jack in a Box commercial, which I will sing. <laughs> you can grab a bite without going far, pack up the kids and crank up the car. Come as you like, come as you are, to Jack in a Box. No need to fuss, just leave it to Jack to whip up a lunch or in between snack. Dinner for six, they got the knack at Jack, Jack in, in the Box. Jack in the Box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they had this huge chorus thing. And it, it, was, it was really, it was incredible. And they had a huge, huge orchestra put this crazy jingle together. And guess what? Back to the album. Okay, uh, let's see it. Thus, it came out the Take Life a Little Easier on Bell Records. Here you go, people. Oh, Bell Records on, there you go. Bell Records from back in the day. And that was my album. And this was a wonderful gift. As you can see, it is still in plastic, literally in plastic. And one of my dear, dear fans sent this to me. And wow. And I said, I had one, but she goes, do you have one still in plastic? I go, no. And so she goes, I'm going to get it for you. And I was like, oh. Awesome. Thank well, you. Well, Bell did a lot of, um, they did some Wonderama albums too with Bob McAllister. They handled a lot of, I guess, kid show mm -hmm. that went to an LP. They would take the song Sun on a kid, sung on a kid show. Right. And they would do that. But uh, uh, for trivia here, so first you had the, uh, the single. Then mm -hmm. they made the uh, the LP of it, yeah, and then it, which was released in '74, and then of course, um, which you've mentioned a few times on uh, previous interviews, at age five, mm -hmm. I think you have the Guinness Book of uh, World Records, I guess, of uh, the youngest, uh, I guess, singer to chart on the Billboard uh, yep. magazine. That's what there, happened. I mean, the the song actually charted, and people sang. You know, they sang the song. It, it kind of touched them and. There was even there's an episode on on YouTube. If you go to Sunny and Share and you type in Sunny and Share, take life a little easier. They actually sang my song on their show. Right after the, and the beat goes on, they sang uh, "Take Life a Little Easier." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
And, you know, so think about that. You're going through the charts or you're checking the daily trades. You see the Jackson 5, you see Elton John, mm -hmm. and there's Rodney Allen Rippey. <laughs> Can't be that. Can't be that. That is awesome. Now, yep. let's. speaking of that, obviously, it doesn't matter when the time is or the decade, when you start off doing something, it mm -hmm. usually leads to other things. And so after the Jack in the Box commercials, you became Mr. Television. There wasn't a talk show from The Tonight Show, Merv mm -hmm. Griffin, Dinah Shore, Mike Douglas. They mm -hmm. all wanted a piece of you. They wanted that cute kid with the personality <laughs> on their couch. Yep. So how did, how did you uh, grab that? A lot of traveling. Me and my mom actually did a lot of traveling and from coast to coast. And believe it or not, it was just a blessing, you know, just to meet these iconic people. There were so many, I mean, the, the, the shows at the time, Mike Douglas, Dinah Shore, Merv Griffin, Johnny Carson, I mean, I mean, how did the Merv go? Ooh, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was great. We had so much fun, you know, and actually the television shows, the, you know, the, the series that were on at the time, Six Million Dollar Man, Police Story, Dr. Welby, MD, The Odd Couple. I don't think there wasn't a show that you were not, weren't you? Um, I have. You I were on Police know. Story. This is for you, man. Wow. There you go. Of course, The, the Odd, Odd Couple. Mm-hmm. And that's where you played yourself. I certainly did. Actually, I I actually owned their building. Oh, okay. That was the episode where I actually owned their building. So it, it's a it's a you have to pull it up and watch it. It's on. I think it's on YouTube. But goodness gracious, YouTube that is a monster of a entity because there isn't just about anything that isn't on there. So it's pretty right. Amazing. Well, it helps keep uh, you know great retro icons as yourself in the news so to speak so, oh it's good and it shares you know and and it's it's something that takes americana and television around the world and it shows the world that we pretty much are all the same i mean it's about families it's about fun it's about life basically and the ups and downs and, and we keep rolling right now you were also on a show that's one of my favorite kid shows of, of all time i'm a those of you who don't know, I'm a, a retro TV show collector. I've got thousands of old TV shows, kid shows, game shows. And so, yeah, so that's what helped me kind of get me going back in, in the day. But um, one of my favorite kid shows was the Harlem Globetrotters Popcorn Machine. Uh -huh. Which is really tough to find, by the way. Any episodes? Uh, da -da -da. How you wow. like that? <laughs> well, you called for it, buddy. You I did. It. That is so. Wait, keep showing that. Let me get a. There go you ahead. go. There we go. The Harlem Globetrotters popcorn machine. Now, I think I have an episode because I found one on 16 millimeter off one of the uh, auction sites, and so I transferred it to digital. Wow. And it's in black and white, but I'll take it any way I can get it. Hey. And it seems like you had fun, especially with good old Metal Ark, Metal Ark Lemon. Metal Ark was, a, you know, all the guys were great from Metal Ark to Tex to Geese and all the other guys. You know, that was a Saturday morning special that, that ran for a number of years. And it was just great, you know, being a little kid and, and connecting with all the other little kids. Yep, that's the shot. And you know what? I still have my uniform to this day. Actually, oh. that my... It's put away, but I definitely I want to put that thing in a shadow box and yeah, oh, definitely. Awesome. I just recently hooked up with the uh, president and CEO of the Harlem Globetrotters, and so they're still on the educational side. And so I work in, uh, you know, youth mentoring and things like that, and and also we're doing a huge push in STEM education, and so we're looking to connect up with the Harlem Globetrotters and kind of you know, share the, share the, the, the platform because we've got a lot going on. We're doing some cool stuff with NASA and kids. And so it's really cool. Yeah. And besides, I mean, you not only were just a once in a time guest, you were a co-star of the show. Yeah. Uh, well, that, was, that was basically my show. It was actually me and the Harlem Globetrotters and I was the brains of the bunch. Getting that into hijinks and trouble. Yep. But I always, I always told the guys how to get out of trouble. I'm like, Hey, you shouldn't do that. Always tell the truth. And they're like, oh, yeah. 
okay, and it was that type of thing. The one guy who didn't listen, of course, was Avery Schreiber. <laughs> right, that's right. They, they called him Mr. Evil. That's something right. like that, right? Yeah. Everybody remembers him from the guy who who goes crunch from the Doritos commercials. Exactly, exactly. And what a what a great guy. What a personality, you know. He was a part of a comedy team with Jack Burns, Burns and Schreiber, back in the in the seventies. Yep, yep. And, and you know uh, what? And and they actually have a theater. It was over in the NoHo district, over in like North Hollywood, and they had the Avery Schreiber Theater. It was like wow. a little theater house. Yeah. And then one, I'll show you one of my favorite guests on the show. Okay. I, I'm sure you can remember this shot right here. Oh, drum roll. Wow, yes, of you course. You and Wilt the Still. <laughs> and Wilt. Yeah, man. And that's that's pretty awesome. I mean, I remember meeting Wilt, and I was like, wow. I thought he was a giant, literally. I just thought he – because I came up to his kneecap, literally. Not his and ankles? I, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> He just kept going and going. Yeah, he was a big guy. I was like, wow. You know? But I heard he was a nice guy, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, there's – there's a few people in the industry that forget, you know, how to what happened and how they got there. But for the most part, many people that I've met in the entertainment industry from, of course, you know, the great Mel Brooks from Blazing Saddles. We we're going to get to that next. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm all over the place. But, you know, it's great people. You know, you're talking about, goodness gracious, Sammy Davis Jr. and so many other people. I mean, it's just. I, well, I, 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 it opens crazy. doors. Jack in the Box opens doors as well as your own personality. Yeah. I mean, what wasn't to love? I mean, you've seen the footage. I mean, cute as a button. Um, so let's move on. In, in 74, I think mm -hmm. you did, was that your first film when you did uh, Blazing Saddles? You played a young Cleavon Little. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, you know, if we were just talking about Blazing Saddles. And, and of course, yes, that was, I think, ah, see, Boy, I'm gonna tell you, -da, what do you got? I like that. Oh, there okay. you go. Good old Blazing Saddles. And so, you know, God bless Mel. Boy, he, he just had a birthday recently and um, he's doing great. And um, yeah, that I played, you know, the young Cleavon Little. And, and um, I've always had hoped that uh, Mel would, would do another Blazing Saddles too, because I would play. Cleavon Little. I would crawl over broken glass to play that role. Well, the I, Revenge of the Sheriff. Yeah. And, and a, a lot of people go, oh, they could never make that. I'm like, come on, people. It's comedy. Right. Because Mel picked on everybody. I don't think anybody was safe in Blazing Saddles. So I think, why would anybody stifle that? Now, I think that it's a wonderful thing what he did. He broke barriers with that film, and I'm glad to have been a part of it. No, oh, it, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, have another uh, look back at another uh, Jack in the Box commercial, wow. if you don't mind. Go for it. And we'll watch it together. And here is a Ronnie Allen Rippey in yet another famous commercial that we know and love. Hi, I'm Ronnie Allen Rippey, and a lot of things can eat at Jack in <laughs> That's Box. the table. It's Jack's steak sandwich, and these are pretty delicious, too, and... This is a taco. This is an onion ring. It might be 10,000 things at Jack in the Box. Yeah. Pack up the kids, crank up the car to Jack in the Box. Come as you like, come as you are to Jack in the Box. You know, there was no one on TV, I think at the time. We had Mason Reese. Remember Mason, of course. Yeah, yeah, me and Mason. He kind of been was like the antithesis to you, like the you know he he said the word smorgasbord. I right. think that was his big claim to fame back in the day. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think he was as big as you were. But there was only about two of you who I really I think touched you know the lives of us when we were watching a commercial. Oh, and Mikey, of course, the kid who eats uh, yeah the cereal. Mike's cereal, that's right. And maybe the Bologna kid who sings "My Bologna" has a first yep. name. That's Andy Lambros, another friend of mine. And so, you know, the thing is, the ad agencies they just did such a wonderful job. All of these guys and and some of the young girls too that were on TV at that time. We had we had a great run. It it set us up and it pretty much put us on a pathway to where we are now. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, exactly. I mean, it 
But you know what? You, that, I don't think anyone's come along. I mean, you had other, other little cute kids, uh, which I'll get to a clip uh, in a second. Mm -hmm. But um, so let me just ask you then from 71 to 75, it was safe to say that you were almost everywhere. You were maybe on 20, 30 times a day on our on our TV sets and mm -hmm. You, uh, you had T-shirts and you had records and yes. you, were on, you were on talk, you were on billboards, like yes. on Sunset Boulevard. And uh, there yeah. you are, 50 feet high, eating a hamburger. And yeah. you even, uh, I don't know if, you, if you've seen this in a while, I don't know if it's a surprise or not. You even uh, made the cover of a certain magazine. And uh, uh -huh. does this bring back memories? <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, you well. have it live. Yeah, yeah, huh? How you like that? There it is. I can't can't pull anything over you. Well, do you know what? The same wonderful friend that sent me the album actually sent me the album, and and she's just you know it's it's wonderful. I don't really call people fans. I I mean they're almost like a, if they care enough to do something nice like that, they're a friend. And 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 you can't you can't get through life, uh, and you can't get through entertainment without friends and if people don't care about you you're done you're, you're you're toast and and literally i'm thankful to have had so many people support me over the years and and wish wish me well and and life is you know you know life's a roller coaster it's not always hot it's not always cold so you just got to keep swimming man you just got to keep rowing and having fun so you did more uh, photo shoots for magazines, Ebony, and uh, yeah. Did you did any look any TV guides or TV supplements? Did I did TV guides? As a matter of fact, I'm digging around here. here oh, awesome! Go. What do you Here's got? Here's another one. This is a recent one. There you oh, go. Oh, it is. There you, go. you look like Clyde Drexler there. Hey, I feel like Clyde Man. Drexler. <laughs> but yeah, this was Hollywood Weekly magazine here, a local publication here in Southern California and they're all over the world actually because they they have different you know distribution so but um, had a wonderful interview in that that was like a year ago a year or so ago but um, wow I'm just excited because um, where things have been going and where things are headed now and just friends and relationships and and the phone is ringing and you know, life is good. Life is good. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy. Let me ask you, when was there a time? I mean, maybe you were just a kid and didn't realize it. I mean, you were a smart kid, obviously. But when you made it, your your name was in like in the lexicon of uh, of history. We you know mm -hmm. uh, so much, in fact. And I, if you're going to pull this one up, see, I mm -hmm. usually just show the photo and then you show yeah. the real McCoy. Do you, do you know where I'm going with this? I don't know what you got. I don't, it might be. You, here. I don't know. You but know, you've made it when they make a doll of you. Aha! <laughs> you got the damn doll! I sure oh, do! Man. How you like that, brother? How do you like me now? How you like that? <laughs> make like, take That's like. Right. And this was a, a wonderful project uh, by the incredible Mattel Toy. And just to give you a little history for your, uh, your viewers out there. Okay. Um, this was a, a very serious thing because back in the day, um, there was a group that kind of got a little steamed at, at the toy industry because they mm. looked around and they did not see any African American dolls. Right. On the and so there was a little controversy, shall we say. And they said, well, you know, what's going on? And so they took it to Mattel, who, of course, is the biggest global toy brand in the world, probably still to this day. And a group uh, got together and they, there was a little bit of tension. And, and Mattel said, okay, if there are any uh, toy makers that are of diverse descent, bring it on, we want to see. And there was a group called uh, Shadana Toys. And they presented i am sure there were other people who presented but uh shadana toys got picked up by uh, mattel toy to produce uh lines of of dolls of of ethnic of ethnic descent and i my doll got selected because i was doing hot things at the time and with jack in a box and i had my little sneakers on and uh, so it turns out uh, they made the rodney allen rippy doll they made the flip wilson doll they made the JJ Jimmy Walker doll. So wow. there were 
several other dolls that were made and they're quite collectible if i'm did, did it sell very well i assume it would have it sold like hotcakes i remember yeah. they oh my goodness may company in on wilshire boulevard i know it well on wilshire so, yeah and parents and kids and oh did were, you have did you have a did you make an appearance like with oh did you, you did i haven't even mentioned you did store appearances store appearances and you know what i love mattel because what they did then was remarkable and and i would love matter of fact i recently reached out and i actually bumped into the ceo recently at a, an event and i said i actually want to create a retro line of of my little doll so i'm looking into that it has a string that you would pull and it has a voice box in there and it would it literally had my Di voice. different sayings that you would say right exactly and it would it would actually talk you would pull this little string here as you could see you would pull it out and the record would it has like a little record inside and it would play but i think it could be a a new release because parents um are coming towards me i mean I, I get emails and they say where can i get a doll for my kid i'm like why don't you release it i'm thinking wow a good little idea so retro doll of course retro doll so <laughs> these, are some of the, these are some of the cool things coming also my album take life a little easier right i mean it was very clean music it was all bubble gum and and, and great stuff and well, the archies the monkeys and rodney allen rippy Heck yeah. And and the cool thing about it is parents are wanting their children to have uplifting and positive music. And this whole album was nothing but bubble gum and lollipops and good stuff. Exactly what kids need. You know, they don't need a lot of the stuff that's that's out there now. And so I'm looking forward, hopefully in 2022, to remaster my album, which has never been released on CD. Wow. And maybe even release it with some children's books and, and package the deal and, and have some fun. I see another uh, CD uh, uh, tour in the making. Heck yeah, man. Or you could sing along with it with your younger self. <laughs> hey, well, me, I, I'm still very much uh, a Lone Ranger. I have not gotten married. I don't have any little Rodneys yet. But Well, you, you know, have the doll, geez. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I have the doll, and, and but I do have a I do have a second doll, and she's back east. And hello, Candy, out there, beautiful Candy. And so, anyway, that's a significant. Okay, sweetheart. well, let me let me, ask, yeah. let me just ask you. I was going to say, mm -hmm. um, around this time, you were still pretty hot. I mean, there's no no two ways about it. But there's a oh, very yeah. famous moment, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm leading to at the American Music Awards, where you and Ricky Siegel from the the Partridge Family. Yeah, uh, got up on the podium, and were you supposed to be the miniature versions of Michael Jackson and uh, Donny Osmond? That was the genius of the great, uh, uh, oh goodness gracious, uh, Dick Clark, because when I walked in that day, that night actually, that was the very first American Music Awards, and Dick Clark was on the red carpet, handshaking personally thanking everyone who came in and he was oh hey man how you doing so and so and oh thank you for coming thank you for coming and when i walked up with my mom he goes rodney you made it oh my god you look like a miniature michael i'll be right back and he tore off and so we didn't know but he had went and told the production when donnie and michael come out make sure that they take he they take rodney and ricky and you so, guys stole the show. I mean, there's no two ways about it. And no one knew what was going to happen. And and Dick Clark put the nominee and had the production put the nominee in my pocket. One little problem. I couldn't read. I couldn't read. Ricky couldn't read. We were too little. And it was not staged. That was real. When they gave me the nominee and I went to read it, I was like, oh, shoot. I can't read this. Is the carpet baggers? Well, it was the carpenter. You get, I know that. I was just being yeah. funny. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, exactly. I could have said that. And I was like, oh my god, I couldn't even read it. And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. And I, I, had, I think Donnie read it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, what happened was no, I held it up. Oh, okay. oh, no, you, 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 you kind of like were waving it around. <laughs> I held, I just held it up. 
nice and steady so everybody can read it because I was like, I cannot read this. If no one, if I can't read this, no one's going to read it. That's right. So that's how that happened. So, as I said, it's still to this day, I think, talked about. It's just you just don't see stuff like that on award shows, you know, spontaneous no. uh, genius. I mean, of course, Dick Clark thought of that. Hey, he's um, a master. He was a master. Let's talk about something else that not too many of us get to have in a lifetime. If, let's say, God forbid, none of the other stuff happened after the Jack mm -hmm. in the Box commercials, who can say, I don't know if you know what's coming, who uh -huh. can say that they were immortalized in a freaking Peanuts uh, comic strip. Aha, uh -huh, that's right. <laughs> I, I mean, had, are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, true. that's true stuff there. I had a dear, dear friend of mine. Uh, I used to work with him at ABC Studios here in, in uh, Los Angeles. And he, believe it or not, is all the way over in Thailand. He's in Thailand. and he's, And he was the first one who sent it to me. And I was like, the heck and he goes yeah me because some of the expats oh wait you didn't know you weren't told no no this is old man this thing this is a rerun from years ago no, i mean when it originally came out were you told you'd be in the comics oh that was years ago yeah we got we got the original from okay. that but they just reprinted that and started to circulate it again because people i got contacted on my social media said hey rodney you're in peanuts and i was like really and now and it was black and white originally now they made it color so i mean what an honor you know i mean a, think about it. snoopy is thinking about having dinner with you hey you can't beat that i mean <laughs> out of anybody to mention not hugh hefner not the president <laughs> but rodney allen rippy you know why i think uh, snoopy wants a couple tacos maybe yeah he wants a burger hey, <laughs> i've never met i've never met a pooch that does not like a burger so right so that that's classic as well Mm -hmm. uh, also, you t talked about it briefly earlier, and if you can just mention it again, mm -hmm. you had a little relationship with uh, the great Sammy Davis Jr. You yeah. did a tap dance together. Was that for a variety show? It was. We were on. Gosh, now, now that now my my gray matter is is catching me, but I forgot exactly what show that was. It was, it was one of the big, you know, Tony Orlando, big, Captain and Tennille. Oh my goodness, it Sunny was and Cher. Like and there we were together doing a dance number. And so it, it was really awesome. Was it like a Mr. Bojangles kind of uh, thing? Take yeah, off? He was, he was tap dancing. And so they had actually bought these little bitty shoes and with taps. And it was crazy. They, they took me through this whole little tap dance and doing this little soft shoe deal. And we got through it together. And uh, I've heard you say in, in earlier interviews, he was a great man. He wasn't feeling too well, but he was still a trooper and still yeah. went on and did his uh, did the, the routine with you. And he was yep. so taken by you. I think you mentioned that you wanted to write him a kind of a thank you note. Yeah. And you didn't think much of it. I'll just send it to him and that'll be that. But what, what did you get back? Well, he actually ended up sending me an autograph uh, letter back and thanking me for Cause I wished him, you know, cause that day, that night that we did the, the little dance number together, he had a cold and he left and he literally went, I got a cold, baby. He goes, <laughs> I got to go kid. He goes, I got a cold. I don't want to get you sick. I got to go. He goes, but it was good working with you. And, and he left. And so I told my mom, I said, mom, I want to send him a get well card. And my mom was like, Rodney, seriously. You're and done. So, you don't. He's yeah. he's moved on. Everybody's yeah. moved on. <laughs> but, my, but I, of course, I pressed my mom and I said, "Mom, we can send it to him. We can send it to him." So, mom and I, we went down to our local, uh, local uh, drugstore. Went down to Thrifties in Long Beach, which is still in downtown Long Beach. Did you get a nickel ice cream at the same time? Heck yeah! We always got the ice cream, of course, and we got a little uh, get well card, and I signed it with my little chicken scratch and. Gave it to my mom, and my mom sent it off to my agent, of course, Dorothy DeOtis. And Dorothy took care of business, and she got it to Sammy. And a few weeks went by, and believe it or not, I got a, a signed letter back, you know, him thanking me for the, the get well card. Well, let me ask you know, before we uh, move on mm -hmm. about Sammy. Uh, he did a famous song called The Candy Man. Yes, and, sir. Which you then recorded. Yes, sir. Candyman is on the album. It is on the back. Where is Candyman? There it is, folks. You see it. 
the candy man right now what well how well, how did that prompt how was that added to the album i mean who who whose idea was that for you to sing a sammy song listen that sammy was an icon and it, and i had a genius genius team of people working with me great management and 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 there was a machine i mean that is what you call a pr machine and and we built it again you were right it was jack in a box it was the the uh, apparel you could go into a jack in a box restaurant and buy a t-shirt you could buy posters i mean and that was a type of um impact that really drove and really brought that thing home and i mean i'm meeting people to this very day and they say hey i had that t-shirt i had your sweatshirt and um i actually it was funny I was on Sunset, Sunset Boulevard here in Hollywood one day, and I'm literally driving eastbound on Sunset and going westbound. As we passed, it was Lenny Kravitz. And I was like, wow. Oh Did he say, are you going my way? No, he was going <laughs> his way. He just passed me. And I literally made a U-turn because I said, oh, man, I love Lenny Kravitz. I said, I got to talk to him. So I make a U, an illegal U-turn <laughs> on Sunset. And I'm jockeying around cars. And finally, we get caught at a light. And I'm on the left, and he's in the right. And he had his window partially cracked. It was Lenny because I saw him as we passed through the front windshield. And um, I said, hey, Lenny. And he looked, and he, he looked like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't look. I said, it's okay, man. It's it's me, Rodney Allen Rippey. And he looked. He goes, man, you are Rodney Allen. I go, pull over for a second. And believe it or not, Lenny Kravitz pulled over. I jumped out of the car. He stayed in his car, and I walked up to his window, and I'm talking to him through his window. And um, coolest thing. I mean, coolest cat, great music. But, right. just, but the funny thing was he said, man, I had your T-shirt when I was a kid. I used to wear your face on my t on my chest, and I was like, "Lenny Kravitz used to wear my T-shirt." So, mission cool. mission accomplished. What else? What more can you can you do? Hey, other than other than being one of his music videos, God, oh I, I right, right, for more music because man, that's a bad boy. He's a great musician, but but truthfully, it's those type of things that that I have. Those are my sweet moments, you know. Right. Meet people, and I mean. I bug out just as much as anybody else. I was like, that was freaking Lenny Kravitz, you know? Right. But, yeah. No, he, I went to, I went to high school with Lenny. Wow. Uh, believe it or not. Yeah. He would play his guitar in the lunch on the upstairs lunch, um, outdoor area. No one would bother him. He would just work on his music. And little did you know, uh, yeah. that he would become huge. I mean, you know, he had the, uh, he had the talent, but you didn't know he was 17, 18 years old Wow. at the time. But listen, yeah. let me uh, move on. We were talking earlier about uh, all the talk shows that you were on. I mean, there isn't a talk show. You could swing a cat. That there wasn't a talk show that you didn't do. Yeah. Uh, one of them uh, was a, a local, very popular show called Midday um, mm -hmm. in New York. And it was hosted by many people. But uh, in this particular uh, instance, uh, they had uh, Bob McAllister, who... Oh, and let me stop. Yes. What, let me ahead. stop you real quick. Check out the pants. Check out my pants. Do you Are see... Are those the, denim? Is that denim buttons or... Oh, no. Denim with, 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 rhymes, with like rhinestones. Studs, with studs on them. Studs. That, that right there was my mother's genius. Do you know... I don't mean to interrupt you. Your Go thought, ahead. I have, to re I have to recognize this. I had no clue. Years later, you know, I was thinking about my mom and I go, mom was a designer because all of the jeans and stuff, she literally made things for me. And I would walk on red carpets and people would freak out. She was and, your wardrobe uh, she was designer. My, she was my designer and she was just so talented. But as you can see, I was like a rock star, you know, with these rhinestones. You didn't care. You're wearing a t-shirt, a uh, sweatshirt. You're yeah. just very casual. It was all cool, man. And then, of course, you told the story uh, previously. We could just say real quick. Uh, a woman was was prepping you for one of the talk shows. And in the back, she didn't know how to mess with your fro. She went, yeah. what do I do? And mom said, do you have a pick? And then she yeah. did the trick where she puts the napkin over your head and just. The handkerchief. Yeah, my mom, my mom would pick my fro out 
and then she put a handkerchief on it, <laughs> add it to a perfect spiral and lift it off. Like, right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And butterflies would come out. It was awesome. Everything. Everything. <laughs> everything was perfect. So that was that was my mom's trick for my perfect. Awesome. Uh, so you're on midday. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob McAllister, who hosted Wonderama, and uh, a little quick background, yeah. I'm the archivist for Wonderama and wow. the Bob McAllister estate. Yeah, I, I basically uh, am the official historian. Uh, it wow. took me a long time, but uh, I actually am the one who keeps, I'm the keeper of the archive. So that's why anything with Bob McAllister uh, blows me away. I almost get teary-eyed. But you... Uh, what was on what it was on with Bob on this interview it was actually a long interview, mm -hmm. and uh, you did a couple tricks, a couple magic tricks, yeah. and I have a surprise for you. Uh, nobody has this footage, nobody, but I do have about a minute where I will show everybody with you and Bob. It's a great thing where you both rip up a napkin, yeah, and Bob's uh, he wants to show that his didn't work, so his was still in pieces when he said abracadabra. But when right. you opened up your hand, yours uh, was put back together again, right. and you couldn't understand why. So let's take a quick look. Uh, if I get this uh, clip set up, it's on midday uh, in New York, yeah, and uh, Bob McAllister is going to show you a, uh, a magic trick. And you're like, do it again. <laughs> so let's take yeah. a quick look. Wow. Today, Mr. McAllister is the star of a television show called Wonderama. I know. I've seen it before. Oh, you have? Yeah. Then you know that he's a magician, right? Okay, let me see it. Oh, do you like magic? Yeah. The hand's quicker than the eye. Did you know that? Yeah. That's why there's so many black eyes, I guess. Huh? <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> going to give me one after that one. I don't blame... I'll tell you what, would you take this napkin? Yeah. And I'll take a napkin. Wow. Okay. And what I want you to do is tear it in half. Can you tear it in half? Like this. And I'll tear it in half again. Right. How many pieces do we have? One. Two. Okay. Two. Uh, three. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> one more time. Five, six, four, five, six. Oh, that, seven, that, that, that's eight. enough. All right, roll it in the ball now. Can you roll it in the ball? Get it in a tight ball. You drop the piece here. Yeah. Let me have this and just get it in a get it in a tight ball. Yeah, hold, tight hold it in a, right in a tight ball. Real, squeeze it as tight as you can. Now here's the magic part. Blow on this. All right. You say abracadabra. Watch, watch. You see, abracadabra. Mm. <laughs> Didn't work very. <laughs> Would you do it? Oh, open yours up a minute. Just yeah, just open your yours up. Uh, you see abracadabra. It? Right. Open it. Uh, how did it get put together? Maybe you better show me how to do the trick. I give up. I, uh, did you enjoy that? Wow. Boy, I hadn't seen that in years. Yeah, what was fantastic about that, and Bob was great with kids. Uh, yep. He hosted Wonderama for 10 years. Before that, he hosted other kid shows in, in, uh, in Virginia and Baltimore for 10 years. So he'd been hosting kid shows for his whole, his whole life. He was a puppeteer, a magician, mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's for a whole other show. But anyway, I don't know if you realized it. He, what he did was he took your crumpled 10 pieces. You didn't see it when you yeah. were looking and kind of like dumped it over the, the couch and he put in the fresh one in your hand. Yeah. You know, it's obviously the hand is quicker than the eye. You know, right. what the left hand is doing, you don't see the right hand. So yep. uh, later in the clip, uh, you actually say, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, one's enough. There but you, you did say on the, on the show, you knew of the show. Did you watch it as a kid? I did. I remember watching, you know, growing up, you know, we watched all of those great shows and everything from Sesame Street and all those things. And I mean, those are the type of things that kids just kind of grew up on. And, you know, you wonder, you know, how, you know, the kids of this age, you know, what really could compare to, to some of the programming that we had back in the day. But, you know, everybody's doing their best. Oh, yeah. You, I, you, Wonderama and the Electric Company, yeah. Sesame Street, the Magic Garden, mm -hmm. uh, the Soupy Sale show, Chuck yeah. McCann had a show. So it was more it was more innocent and it was all about entertaining. It wasn't about talking down nope. or showing that you were better than somebody. Uh, so the, the innocence of the 70s, was, I just think, is just more fun. That's why I collect 
yeah. those type of shows. It was beautiful, and it and it was educational, and empowering. You know, and that's that's some of the things that I'm doing now. You know, because you look at the deficiency of young people, especially at the at the high school level. Because when I was in high school, you know, you had so many different trades. You had, you know, uh, electrical and wood shop and automotive and glass and home ec. glass and home ec. And as a matter of fact, I love to cook, and that's where I kind of got my, you know, my start. And I love to cook. You know, I actually I've been able to. Outcook most of my girlfriends, you know. I, mean, I, I can burn. I can get in the kitchen and I can really make it happen. So, but, and not just not just tacos and burgers, right? Yeah, not just burgers, man. I mean, burgers are every once in a while. I do have my own aged blue cheese sirloin burger. Okay. That's my own. Matter of fact, I'm actually trying to work a deal with good old Jack in the Box to pick up the Rodney Allen Rippy burger. So, send them Ooh. a few letters, everybody. Hey, you guys should have the Rodney Allen Rippy burger. Send them a. Oh, few that, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, not yeah. too late for that. So nope. let me ask you, well, since that time frame, we were discussing the early to mid 70s. And then if we mm -hmm. if we move on to the um, the later part of the 70s and the early 80s, mm -hmm. um, were, uh, were you still uh, making the rounds as much as you were when you were younger? Or did you notice a little bit of a tail off? Because you're now turning into a teenager, you know, mm -hmm. you know and you weren't, I mean, maybe you, you still were cute, of course, but we didn't have the, the the cute Rodney that we all knew about. So did you notice mm -hmm. a change in auditions? Maybe you weren't being sent out as much or? No, no, actually, oh. I worked all the way up into. Actually, I was the last thing that I did in my earlier, earlier years. I was roughly around 12. I was almost 12 when I did. Oh, God, book two with George. Right. Burns. So we I did the Oh, God, book two movie. And um, I, I it, that was amazing, you know, meeting George Burns. I mean, come on. Hi, Rodney. Man. Nice to see you. Exactly. With his cigar. And I was like, just his image, his glasses and the cigar. You were like, that is he. I knew he was an icon, you know, just being on the set and the way everybody. He had total respect. And I was like, wow. You know, you knew he was really big time you so know. what i was saying i did i just to specify what i meant to say was so you didn't mm -hmm. really notice a difference from when you were three four and five to maybe 11 12 and 13 you still went out the same way you did before still yeah i mean because think about it the jack in the box was the start as i grew through those years i mean i was doing personal appearances like i said on six million dollar man and police story and all of the cops. But you, you weren't allowed. You weren't allowed to promote or be at a place that was a competitor. Like you couldn't be at a McDonald's uh, event, right? Well, I never really wanted to. Even okay. to this very day, I have had creative people. I've had people go, Rodney, why don't you do this campaign? Come to Shakey's. <laughs> yeah, why don't you do this campaign against Jack in the Box? And you know, and I thought about it. And I go, you know, I'm a type of person that you know, you don't, you don't do that you're so, loyal loyal to the you, core you have to be you know and i'm like look if i never do a commercial for jack and box ever again i'll never go out and intentionally you know go hey i don't eat jack in the box anymore i eat so now you know depend you know you, you a lot of people go well if they offered you and i'm like look i don't if there are other jobs that i'd rather be offered than a slam campaign so not really in the slam and things. And I think that between the people that I know, matter of fact, I am going to share this. Oh, go ahead. I'm actually a producer and actually wanted a talent on a project called Bucks of America. Now, this is a huge film that is uh, coming, hopefully, 2022. And a lot of people don't know that during the Revolutionary War, there was a african-american regiment that's what that logo is there and they actually were put kind of on front lines uh against the british and they actually had a flag this is actually the bucks of america flag that's on the sleeve of the shirt and the genius of the uh the creator of the film um, and executive producer uh, robert gatewood director, writer, producer, he contacted me and again said, and that's, that's Robert, 
Robert Gatewood, he's on Influential People. He's on the cover, and they did a huge article. He's even on the back of the magazine. But anyway, he um, he approached me and said, Rodney, I have a role for you. I want you to be one of the militia men in my movie. So I was like, wow. And he started telling me about the history. And come to find out, a lot of people don't know that there was a African-American regiment that was – very instrumental in helping turn the tide at Bunker Hill. Oh, okay. A lot of people don't know. And it's not really even taught in schools. So if you go on the internet and you Google uh, Bucks of America, it's going to go back to Robert Gatewood because he is the one who kind of kicked this off. Believe it or not, the British government contacted Robert and said, we've seen online that you're working on this project. And they fact checked and they got back to him and said, it looks like you've uncovered a piece of, of history that hasn't ever been told. So this is a huge opportunity for me to be a producer on this film, to be a lead actor in this film. That's something happening. Um, I just got a call from a By the way, this is the what are we do, what are we doing now uh, segment. Yeah, you I'm just already, segue. You said what you already beat me to it. <laughs> oh, I'm segueing. I'm segueing again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just you know I love you, man. Just keep going. Keep going. What, what no, I was going to say. So that's what you're doing now. You've got this. Sounds like a great project. Yeah. And um, and it's great. You'll be producing and acting at the same time. Yeah. And, and working on this. I was going to go back and and to mentioning when you look back. Uh, at those early years, uh, mm -hmm. and then you see, you you know you're living today, and we live yeah. in a very thank goodness for me in this show. We live in a very uh, retro, uh, friendly kind of uh, world right now. People love yeah. the past. They love. They yeah. would love to get into a time machine, pick yeah. a year, you know, and go to it. Yeah. And so when when you look back, are you kind of like you saying, "Wow, that was so cool that I did," and I can still what thirty, forty plus years later you know, still enjoy it. And then you have a, uh, not only a new people, because you're not really mm -hmm. looking to, you know, hey, kids, look what I did. But it's people who grew up with you who are our age. Right, right, who's, right. Who's like, you know, thanks, you you got me through that time. Or, yeah. you know, I, w I wasn't being good in school. And I just remembered, you know, I watched this or that. And I saw you. Mm -hmm. And I just remember how cool it was. And uh, do you look back at all that with fondness and, and uh, just happy memories? I do. You know, I, there's never been uh, a time where I looked at my career and said, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. Or it, it was it was beautiful from the very first audition, which was Jack in a Box. It's very beautiful to this very day, like interviews like this, being on your show. My career has never stopped. Thank God that there are things happening right now. I mean, literally, as we speak that are projecting and, and moving my career forward in the, the relationships and the connections and things that I'm doing, I'm, I'm completely cool with it. it I've ne and it was never about, oh, I want to be in front of the cameras. Oh, I need the spotlight to keep me alive. It's never been any of that. I, I told people, I'm like, I'm comfortable. I'm a shooter. I edit video. I produce. I'm, I'm constantly... Um, in creative mode. So, I mean, I have projects of my own that are in development. And and a lot of times I meet people and they start talking to me and they're like, well, I need to sign an NDA. I'm like, look, I don't want your projects. I got enough projects. I said, I'll help you. I'll do whatever I can to assist you or point you in the right direction or see if I got any connections to help you. But I, I just... I'm, I'm looking forward to that next big step and, and, and it's already starting to happen. And, and and it all started with a with a Jack in the Box commercial. Hey, that's it. That's and where it all got started. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, Rodney, I just can't thank you enough. Yeah. Uh, for joining us and just explaining what it was like being a you know a child star, a retro icon. Oh, and I what got else a, you got? I do. I do want to tell you before we out. Okay. I'm now the studio unit manager at Twenty Five Twenty Six Studios here in Burbank. And we are a production house for digital media production, television, feature film. I'm also co-executive producer of the Country Soul Music Awards that's oh. coming up next year. I'm working with a dear friend of mine, James Andrew Luna, uh, the Taylor to the Stars. 
and we're working on a, a reality show called Taylor Wars. So imagine top tailors battling against the clock to come up with really great things, but they're working through problems. And so between that and my last thing is I'm a, I'm a huge automotive buff. This is my retro 71, nice. Corvette, which I own. I own a black 71 Corvette like that. And uh, actually I'm, I'm putting together a TV show and fundraiser called the celebrity shootout. And this is something that I'm looking forward to try to, Put all the pieces together. I want to bring the biggest icons in television and music and VIPs who have cool cars and make them all drag race for charity. So <laughs> the viewers at home, and this is going to be a streamed event, they can actually make donor bets. So they can actually, through an app, make a donor bet. So I, I want Jay Leno to challenge Tim Allen. I want you know, Lady Gaga to race Kim Kardashian. And because these girls got Lamborghinis and hot cars, well, I'm like, hey, girls, can you drive them? That's what I want to find out. Wow. But it is about skill and it really is about raising funds, millions of dollars for charities. And my goal is to get a list of maybe 200 charities that sometimes they don't get the love that they need. I am confident that this show, this broadcast, this stream, could raise millions of dollars for charities and causes all around the world. So stay tuned for the Celebrity Shootout. Awesome. Awesome. Rodney, as I said, an honor to have you here giving us the, 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 the lowdown, the background and how it all started. Yep. And uh, it's just it's fa it's a fascinating journey. And it's and now it's another chapter. So hey, the best is yet to come. That's exactly what the magazine said, you see it right there, right? You know there. the song, don't you? The best is yet to come. That's right. That's right. The best is yet to come. But I want I want to thank you for, for joining us here on the, the retro time machine. Yeah. And best of luck in and everything else that you do from, from this day forward. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. No, no, no problem. And I want to thank uh, all our uh, viewers for tuning in. Thank you. Yeah. to the to the mm -hmm. retro uh, time machine where we discuss all things retro and we'll be back next time with another great episode so uh for the one and only uh rodney allen rippy uh, i'm jay jennings and we'll see you next time on the retro time machine peace